So guys, I'm headed off to the gym for my second workout of the week. It turns out you guys really like these raw workout vlogs. So the last episode, this is gonna be episode two, by the way, where I'm gonna be documenting my bulk and my training and my progress over time for you guys. I'm just gonna be throwing up these raw workout vlogs every week. And so it got, it got a pretty incredible response from you guys on the last one. You guys love seeing these, these raw workout vlogs. So I'm just gonna be throwing them up from now on, documenting my progress, throwing in some tips, doing some voiceovers and whatnot, just some raw footage. So you guys seem to like that. Another thing I want to say is from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys so much for all you guys that reached out to me personally from the last video. You guys heard me talking about how I've really fucked up knees. I have really bad inflammation problems and I have this like predisposition to like rheumatoid arthritis and whatnot. And so many of you guys reached out telling me like, hey, this is how I fix my problems. It means the world to me, man, because, you know, a big part of me still thinks the internet's a pretty fucked up place. But like, that was beautiful how you guys like all reached out and kind of like tried to support me and like get, and I got a lot of valuable tips from you guys. So like that really means the world to me. Um, I guess that's the power of having an audience and people that, you know, you have this like built, built a uh, connection with through like providing value and giving information. So that was really fucking cool, man. That was really awesome. So I can't thank you guys enough for all the support I got on that. Um, an update on that, by the way. And the reason I'm not going to be training legs again today, cause I'm a fucking apparently a leg skipper, which is bullshit. But anyways, the other day I got my knee drained again. So I told you guys how I was getting my knee drained. Fucking, I got it drained again, man. They pulled out so much fluid. I got my knee drained. I, they took out like 50 mil, milliliters of this synovial fluid crap. And the next day, it was all back. <laughs> literally, literally all back almost. Like it was, it was like 30 milliliters what they took out the other day. This time I said fuck it and I got a cortisone shot. So I know I sound like a hypocrite because in the last video I said I don't like to take heavy medications and whatnot. But this isn't really like an ongoing medication. It's just like this cortisone shot that they put in your knee and it takes away the inflammation and it prevents the fluid from building back up again. No, it's nasty, but that's what I got done. And so I got that done two days ago, which is why I can't actually do any deadlifts or sort of leg work today because I have to let that, that cortisone injection kind of just settle in without you know um screwing up the whole procedure so i'm just not gonna mess with uh any sort of crazy leg shit today i'm just gonna be doing the upper body stuff i'm gonna be hitting some overhead press some pendle rows some dips and or maybe some flat dumbbell bench press depending on how the dips make me feel because usually they fuck me right up they screw up my sternum so but yeah we're gonna be throwing up some some weight on those exercises usually i'd be doing trap bar deadlifts in this workout so uh, if you guys are on my email list or maybe even saw it on like the YouTube community post, I basically threw up my workout schedule and what I'm gonna be doing this uh, fall and winter, my workout program. And so last workout was like incline bench, um, should have been squats, but you guys know my knees are fucked. Um, and then it was also some weighted pull-ups, some Romanian deadlifts, and then a few isolation exercises, right? Um, pretty shit weather here today in, uh, in Chelsea is like 15 minutes outside of Ottawa. This is where my parents live. It's pretty nice here. It's pretty secluded. I, I grew up actually like not in the city. I didn't grow up in Ottawa. I live in Ottawa now kind of with my grandparents, but this is this is like 15 minutes outside of uh, outside of Ottawa. I don't know if you guys are familiar with like Gatineau Parks, but that's basically where I grew up in the middle of butt fuck nowhere. Actually, that's not really true. It's like, it's only 15 minutes. It's such an interesting spot because it's like so different from the city, but it's only 15 minutes away from the city. It's like all forest and it's kind of a beautiful area to visit. It sucks Royal Balsack if you grow up in it because there's nobody around and it's pretty, as I get, uh, as I said, pretty secluded. So yeah, man, but it's so funny. I was talking to my video editor today. Uh, his name's Oberon. He's an, he's an absolute incredible video editor he's the man behind the uh the recent edits that you guys have been seeing on my videos and we were like talking about it we were like holy shit man putting all this work into these like high production value videos but it turns out you guys just want to see me throw up some fucking weight at the gym so <laughs> that's what we'll be doing but like we're also going to be like you guys can expect to see kind of a balance of the different types of content from now on so essentially we're going to be doing like one educational video per week like one really high quality edited video with like talking about different topics relating to the polarity fitness approach and philosophy and then the, the two other videos so the two other videos we're gonna be doing are just gonna be these workout vlogs where I'm basically just showing you guys the stuff that I teach but in action right which I think is really helpful because I'm not really like just a basic kind of fitness youtuber I'm really like trying to teach an approach a philosophy 
So it's really helpful for you guys to see it in action, right? So that's basically the approach that I'm going to be taking from now on. And um, it always like warms my heart. I get these like messages from you guys and you're like, and it, it, and I don't get these a lot because a lot of you guys also, like a lot of people really hate me and my approach, which is funny because it shows that, you know, a lot of people are just like, they really identify with their, with their gym rat, um, you know, side, which is fine, right? I'm not like, I don't care if people are obsessed with going to the gym, do you, right? Do what you want to do. But like, I love these con- comments I get and these messages where people are like, man, your content is so refreshing in this age of gym rat dark culture. And it warms my fucking heart, man, because that's the whole reason um, I started my brand in the first place is because I wanted there to be a, a way for people to kind of get in great shape uh, drug free naturally, but not have to sacrifice their lives and the stuff that they love to get in great shape. Because that was my whole problem when I was getting into shape, man. I was like, I realized like I had built an okay physique, but then I realized that my life was pretty much consumed by fitness and it's really not really my cup of tea. So I find it funny when you guys, when a lot of people comment, they're like, dude, shut the fuck up. You don't know what you're talking about. You can't train twice a week. I'm like, dude, that's fine. You're just, you, we just disagree. It's fine. Like I'm just not for you. Right. But there are people who don't really care about the whole gym rat bodybuilding thing and that's who I cater to, right? So I think a lot of people don't really understand that when it comes to, you know, my kind of angle, when it comes to fitness content creation and my whole brand. That's really my whole angle. Like I really don't care about bodybuilding, gym rat. I'd rather like I'd rather just build a good physique, do it in like a balanced way, live a more balanced life that doesn't really revolve around fitness. But hey, to each his own, right? If you guys like aren't into that, then I'm probably not the guy for you. But those are the people I, I cater to. And I think it is refreshing in this uh, you know, in this fitness industry where it's funny. We find ourselves in a funny situation in the fitness industry where, you know, the majority of people who are actually just normal drug free people with, you know, responsibilities outside of the gym you know normal genetics they don't really care about living in the gym that's the majority right and the minority are actually steroid users and the steroid users and the bodybuilders those are the loudest people in the fitness industry those are the fucking role models that people look up to when in reality it's a funny situation where the majority are training how the minority should right drug-free people are training how the minority should which are steroid users bodybuilders so that's really where I come into play and that's really like my whole kind of approach and what I what I strive to kind of teach is like hey there's a way to do it where you you can do this drug-free you can do this without you know without uh, you know living this sort of crazy bodybuilding lifestyle that's all about sacrifice and fucking throwing your life on the altar just to get in good shape you know, I don't, I don't really care about that. So that's kind of my outlook. But anyways, I'm just fucking rambling on here as I'm driving to the gym. Um, I want to cover a quick little question I got as well. Someone asked me like, hey man, you used to promote training three times per week and now you only talk really about training um, twice per week. What the fuck's up with that, right? Drinking some coffee here. It's my, my pre-workout uh, caffeine here. I like to down like a cup of coffee before I train. But he was like, he was like, what the fuck's up with that, man? You used to talk about three times per week training. Now you only do two. And I'm like, I have nothing against three times per week training. In fact, like a big portion of my time training has been training three times per week. I just think twice per week training is a little bit better. I just think it has, it gives you more room for error, especially as I said, for, for those of us, you know, who have kind of, we're doing other things and we're, we're not like fully into that gym rat lifestyle. Twice per week training gives you the perfect balance of kind of workload and recovery. So that's why I love it so much. It's so perfect because a lot of times when I train three times per week, I'm not really recovered for each session. But when I train twice per week, I'm like fully, fully recovered for each workout, which is what you want. This person almost absolutely destroyed me. Jesus Christ. What is with these people, man? Learn how to drive. Um, anyways, but yeah, man, I'm just more of a fan of twice per week training. If you, if you have the recovery ability to do so, then by all means train three times per week. I just think for the majority of people, twice per week training is really the sweet spot. It's that fucking, it's that perfect balance of where you're getting enough workload. You're even able to hit some muscle groups twice per week, but you're also just getting incredible recovery. Every time you step in the gym, you have full focus, full energy. And um, yeah, it's, 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 it's my preferred way of doing things. And I think most people will see really great results training just twice per week. Like our society's conditioned us into believing that more is better, right? Like study more, get better grades, work longer hours and get a bigger paycheck. But really due to the nature of weight training when you're drug free, our recovery ability is limited, right? We can only do so much strength. People seem to think strength training is like not this strenuous activity, but it really fucking is, man. (laughs) You're literally tearing your body apart. Like you need time to recover. But anyways, 
we're conditioned to think that more is better. And it, and it is true for a lot of things because practice makes perfect in a lot of arenas of life. So the, the thing that I kind of quoted was like, you know, practice, if you're trying to learn the piano, like practice as much as you can, man. Like practice until you fall asleep drooling on the keys, wake up, practice some more. But unfortunately, excessively practicing the piano isn't gonna have as many downsides as excessively training because, you know, at best, at best our progress stalls which is what typically happens to most people when they train more than two to three times per week and follow these bodybuilding routines but at worst our bodies start to literally crumble into pieces so a lot of people don't understand that but anyways man so yeah i'm going to be trying to hit some personal records on uh, overhead press some pendlay rows um i wish i could do so usually i'd be doing trap bar deadlifts but they don't have a trap bar deadlift in this gym nor can i do it quite yet so shit my tree fell yeah. It's funny, this is the gym that I used to work out at when I was getting into fitness. I used to walk here in like the middle of snowstorms and shit before I could drive. Good old times, man. Where I was like really trying to figure this stuff out for myself. When I was 13, I said fuck it and bought a home gym because I was tired of <laughs> I was tired of coming here. It's ridiculous, man. I do like home gyms, but fuck, it gets stale, especially in my basement. It's all dark, and like my grandma's a bit of a hoarder, so there's a bunch of shit laying all over the place. So yeah, it's nice to switch it up here and there, and it's also better for filming purposes. Like, the basement really doesn't look very good um, on camera, so I figured I'd just take you guys with me to the gym. Um, and I love Chelsea. I love Chelsea in the fall because it's beautiful, like leaves and everything. That's a beautiful thing about Canada. Canada pretty much sucks for eight months of the year, but like fall is really, really nice. Um, unfortunately, it's really short, but it is really beautiful. Okay, we pull up to the motherfucking gym. Man. Let's get it. All right, so I'm about to get into my working sets here. I'm gonna basically go for 140. So my last workout, I got 140 for eight on the first set and then seven on the second. So this is where the magic happens, man, because in that second set, I'm gonna try and get eight. And that's, where, that's really where the magic happens over a long enough time horizon. It's just adding those little reps here and there, right? So. If I go from 140 for one set of eight and then the next set I get eight again, then that's, then that's fucking progress. And that's what you wanna be shooting for in every workout, just that extra rep, you know, the rep here, the little bit of weight there, that's what counts, right? It's not about making these ginormous leaps of fucking progress workout to workout, but over time, these small little improvements add up to massive gains. And that's really the name of the game, right? And that's why we don't train that's why we don't annihilate ourselves in the gym. Like you want to go in, go into the gym, work hard, stimulate muscle growth, but get get out of the gym, rest, recover, and then come back with that ability to make that little bit of improvement. So if you're just annihilating yourself, destroying yourself, like you do with these bodybuilding routines, you're not going to be recovering between workouts. You're not going to come back each workout with the ability to make these small little jumps. And that's the whole name of the game with Polarity Fitness. That's why we we train just enough to stimulate that growth, but then we get out, we rest, we come back with the ability to make strength gains. And sometimes you make the gains, sometimes you don't. You don't have to make it in every fucking workout. You know, month to month, you want to see that improvement. You're not going to, you know, make progress in every workout. It's not really realistic when you're drug free, but over that long enough time horizon, if you're seeing that improvement, then things are, things are improving, your physique's improving. If you're seeing that strength gain, that's what counts. So I'm gonna try and get eight reps in this set right here. This is my first working set. I like to take a more uh, close, close grip with overhead press. I find it keeps me a bit tighter. And I like to, I'm more tricep dominant as well, but I like to keep my thumb also over the bar. That's typically my, my strongest position here. You can experiment. Some people like going like shoulder width or wider, but I prefer just like close grip like this here. So we got eight reps, same thing as last workout. Key thing with the overhead press is like really fucking squeezing your ass, man. Like the overhead press is such a demanding exercise. Like it's working your entire physique. So you have to keep, keep your base tight, you know, squeeze the ass, squeeze the legs, squeeze your abs, you know, give you a strong base to push off of. But uh, yeah, it's a good set. 
So I always want to take full rest periods between these sets, three to five minutes, three minutes at least, you know, like you're getting no benefit by resting less than three minutes. Your strength is going to drop significantly. So it took about four minutes rest. Now I'm going to jump into my second set. So last workout, I got, as I said, seven reps on this set. This is where the striving counts. This is where I'm going to be fucking striving for that eighth rep, right? I may or may not get it, right? <laughs> what counts is the striving. So I'm going to try and get this. Uh, and yeah, if I do, if I add that rep, then that is incredible progress. That's an indication of muscle growth. So be shooting for that now. So that's a fucking big personal record right there. So now again, rest about three to five minutes and then, then I'm gonna do a back down set. So that was two sets of one, 140. And that's what fucking counts, man. That's what I'm trying to teach you guys. Like it's that little bit of striving here and there for those little improvements that just fucking add up to massive gains over time. It's not about killing yourself, right? In every, in every workout. It's not about annihilating, annihilating yourself like doing tons of volume. It's about going in, training hard, but then getting out, putting an emphasis on recovery so that over time you're seeing these, these little gains here and there. And when you're drug free, you can't separate size and strength. The focus has to be on gaining strength. You'd be doing all the volume in the world, hitting all the angles, doing all the exercises. But if you don't see those improvements, you know, every other week, month to month, then your training program is fucking dog shit. And that's the whole point that I'm trying to teach. So I'm going to rest and then drop the weight a little bit and then go into my last set and be my third set, like a drop down set. What you guys have probably heard me say a lot in most of my videos is, you know, the problem with high volume bodybuilding routines. And you'll see I'm only doing two to three sets here. And, you know, since we're not annihilating ourselves, since we're prioritizing recovery, every time we step in the gym, you know, we can train with that intensity. We can train hard enough to stimulate muscle and strength gains. And that's the problem when natural lifters try and, you know, mimic bodybuilding routines is that there's too much volume. You end up going through the motions. You, you end up doing, you know, fucking five sets per exercise, but you're not doing justice to any one of those sets. And so when you prioritize recovery, you come in and you can push it hard. And when you do push it hard, you know, you can, you only need to do anywhere from one to three sets for upper body shit. I like to do, you know, two to three sets squats and deadlifts. You can do one set sometimes you can get away with that, but usually it's just a few sets, right? And that, and that's all you need when you're training intensely to stimulate that growth. And the problem is that the reason why most people can't fathom training just twice per week is because most people train like fucking pussies. Most people don't train hard enough. They don't push it to that bleeding edge. Their, their, their idea of failure is about three to five reps shy of their actual failure point. And that's why people think like, what? I can't, I can't get away with training just twice per week. That's nothing, but you're not. The problem with those people is that they're just not putting lots of effort into the sets that, that they do. And if you did do justice to every set and you pushed it to the bleeding edge, you'd soon realize that doing, you know, following a high volume approach would bury you into the ground. So that's where a lot of people need to, 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 ch to change their approach. They need to put more effort into a reduced amount of training. And this way they can get in and out of the gym quicker, but they're also, you know, they're, they're, they're stimulating more muscle growth because they're pushing harder. And then, what happens is that the recovery is emphasized and then over time you see that strength increase, right? So that's the gist of it, man. That's the gist of the low volume approach. That's the reason why it's to, it's to facilitate the strength gains. Like everything always comes back to progression. People think like low volume, low frequency, like all that is so fucking special. It's not special. It's we, we do that in order to facilitate the strength gains over time. Because as I said, you cannot separate size and strength when you're drug free. So now I'm gonna go for this last set. This is a bit of a lighter set, just to get a little bit of volume in there, just to finish my, uh, my shoulders off. That's how I like to do it. Like I've been messing around with some straight sets recently. So I did two sets of 140. I'm liking the straight sets quite a bit. I'm not gonna lie to you, but sometimes I just do one top set, so, you know, six to eight reps, followed by one lighter set of like eight to 10, 10 to 12. But I'm on the bulk right now. I can handle a couple extra sets here and there. So I'm gonna try and go for 12 here. I may or may not get it once again, but I'm gonna strive for it. I got 115 for 11 on the last workout, so I'm gonna try and get 12 here. That's all it is, man.
shit. So that's fucking personal records all around right there. So I'm gonna uh, rest a little bit and get some rows. So next workout. So I got two, two sets of eight with 140. So I hit the top end of the rep range. I, I'm working in six to eight rep range for the first two sets. I hit eight on both. Now I'm gonna add anywhere from like two to five pounds, drop back down to six and build my way back up to eight. And it's just this continuous pro process. You can do like a double progression like that, or you can just micro load. But I know a lot of people don't have micro plates, so I'm just doing, I'm sticking to double progression so I can like show you guys and you know, nothing special, no fucking crazy secrets, just over time chipping away, you know, chipping away at those little strength increases. Biggest, biggest area where people fuck themselves on rows. Because of bodybuilding culture, people are always strapping up for rows. It's like, you're limiting yourself in so many ways, man. Um, overall strength in general, but especially in other exercises, like having a weak grip, weak hands, it's not gonna be helping you in anything. <laughs> like, in anything, not just in the weight room. But uh, yeah, it astonishes me how many people strap up for fucking rows. It's like, why? Why don't you want to build your forearms? Why don't you want strong hands? You're going to be hurting your performance in the bench. You think you're going to be able to hold lots of weight in, on the barbell and on bench press with weak hands and forearms? Not going to happen, man. And that's why I disagree with a lot of the bodybuilding training styles. I'm trying to fucking isolate certain muscle groups. It's like the body works as a whole. The body builds muscle as a whole. It trains as a whole. People think they get more back development when they're not, when they're uh, strapped up for rows, but it's not the case, man. You're especially with something like a pen lay row. If your grip is limiting you, then even more reason to fucking train it. Um, if you're doing something like heavy Romanian deadlifts, then obviously you want to strap up because it's going to be limiting your hamstring uh, growth and your posterior chain. But like when you're getting up to fucking like 315, 400 pounds on a Romanian deadlift, it doesn't make sense to try and hold it anymore. But for something like rows, it makes absolutely no sense. Like you should be using rows to build your forearms, to build your hands and it'll carry over into all the other exercises, carry into deadlifts, stronger forearms, stronger bench press, stronger overhead press. So that's something I really don't get with fucking bodybuilding training. So yeah, I'm gonna do one more set of this, it's 185. And then I'll get into either some dips or some flat dumbbell bench. So again, you guys are probably wondering like where the fuck is the leg work? As I said, usually for this workout, I started with trap bar deadlifts, two hard sets. And then if you want to do more leg work in, in, your, in your training, well, for a lot of people, like a couple hard sets of squats and some deadlifts and then maybe some hamstring curls usually does it for leg work, man. Like if you're training hard on squats, a lot of times it's gonna get you all the leg size you want. But if you wanted extra leg work, what I'd recommend is on like, this session, for example, I throw in some leg press. I fucking, I like leg press. I think that's one of the, one of the good machines worth using 100%. It's, it's the reason like, really most machines are bullshit. Um, one of the main reasons that machines are good, especially for legs is because a lot of times with squats, like your lower, like it's not gonna be your legs that are gonna be the limiter on something like squats. A lot of times it's gonna be the lower back. And things like leg press are really great because they allow you to pretty much train to failure or close to. 
and just completely fatigue the legs and take the lower back really out of the equation. So it allows you to get a lot more leg work in, like direct leg work in. And it's still, you know, a compound exercise, a big movement that's gonna tra train lots of muscle mass in the body, but really it's just going to allow you to safely take your legs close to failure. So if you wanted extra leg work, you could do leg press. You know, even if you like for some training cycles, if you wanted to drop like the squats, for example, just go really hard on like leg press and then on the other workout, do more like deadlifts and stuff that could work as well. You know, I get questions about that a lot. Like, do I have to barbell squat? You don't have to, man. I just think it's such a fucking bang for your buck exercise. It's going to put so much muscle on your entire body. You know, back in the day, called it the growing exercise because it just fucking slaps meat onto you from head to toe. And so like, it's really, my physique didn't really improve that much until I started squatting. I'm being fucking dead ass when I say that. I used to train like pretty much just upper body because people I used to follow when I was getting into fitness were leg skippers. So I train, I, I pretty much skip out on, on lower body, but I didn't really even gain that much size throughout my entire body until I started fucking training legs hard, squatting hard. But you don't necessarily have to squat. Like you could do like fucking, like a good substitute for the squats, like a trap bar deadlift, you know, leg press, of course. You can do like hip belt squats, things like that. Like I think definitely in the past I've been a bit too dogmatic when it comes to exercise selection, I admit to that. But it's just because I'm really a big fan of keeping my message very streamlined and telling people like, hey, get strong at these lifts. You'll have a good physique. There's no two ways about it. But especially if you have injuries, structural limitations, um, you can swap out exercises. I'm very insistent on training big basic movements. That's the thing. I'm very insistent on big basic compound movements, but the individual selection, that's gonna come down to like injuries, you know, structural limitations, and even just fucking personal preference, what you enjoy more. But really it's like, there's so many different interpretations of my, my training philosophy. That's what a lot of people don't understand. They take, thing, they take, they take things very literally. There are many different interpretations. As long as you're hitting on the fundamental principles, that's all that matters, man. There's a lot of little nuances you can talk about, but as long as you're hitting on the overall fundamental principles, you know, like you're fucking, you're focusing on getting strong at big basic movements, you're emphasizing recovery, you're focusing on rest, nutrition, all that stuff, just basic drug-free fitness. Like as long as you're applying those in their totality, you're gonna be fine, man. So that's why, that's another reason why I wanted to like start vlogging these workouts for you guys. So you guys can kind of see my thought process behind different shit. You can, I can show you that I, I'm not super like strict. I'm like pretty lenient with this stuff but you guys can see like the overall principles in action. So now I'm gonna get into some dips actually, hit some fucking dips and um, hopefully they feel good. All right, so the dips were feeling tight, so I'm gonna give them a shot. Sometimes like those last few reps, I always feel like my fucking chest pulling apart, but hopefully we'll keep it dialed. I think it's better to like do higher reps on dips. I think it's better to hit like a good clean set of like 15 to 20 than it is to like fucking strap on 300 pounds and like hit five reps. Used to do that shit and it's not worth it. <laughs> tell you it's not worth it. Dips are pretty, I have a love-hate relationship with them. But what an exercise though, holy shit dicks. Okay, let's get into this. Fucking solid. Another thing I see people fuck up so much, man, is like what most people don't understand, especially on like things like bench dips, even curls or anything. It's like what most people don't understand is like that final stretch you get on the bottom side of the eccentric part of the motion is where the biggest stimulus comes from. That's where you stimulate the most muscle growth. So like for example, on dips, if I'm just going like that, I'm, I'm stimulating nowhere near as much muscle mass as if I really like fucking stretch the chest out. It's that stretch at the bottom side of the uh, eccentric, like the stretch reflex. That's what stimulates the most muscle growth. So, so many people are living, leaving so many gains on the table, by, like stopping their bench press short of touching the chest and not getting that stretch. Obviously with dips, it's like hit or miss because you don't want to screw your sternum up. But that felt good. They're like wide enough to the point where I don't like fuck my sternum up too bad. 
but even like with like you guys will see me do some incline dumbbell curls a lot of people are like come down here they leave it like that it's like you're getting no benefits like if you fucking you got to bring them back and let that stretch come it's the most painful part of the movement but it's where you stimulate the most growth so keep that in mind on all your exercises and back in like i admit like a lot of my older videos i would lower like you know time under tension doesn't play as big a role in muscle growth as a lot of people think but i definitely used to lower the weight way too quickly <laughs> when i was doing like bench it'd be like press and then and then drop and then press and then drop seems overhead press and be like really fast and it's not really the way you want to go about it you want to like lower it under control i don't buy i don't buy like oh three seconds up three seconds down you're leaving gains on the table by doing that that's bodybuilding bullshit. but if you're not controlling it then one you know you're not really getting that bottom that bottom the eccentric part of the motion down but you're also kind of throwing off your balance so like when you lower it under control you're in a more balanced and controlled state to then go and press right so that's important that's something i notice a lot with people whenever i go to public gyms so yeah i'm gonna do probably might do like i might do one or two more um but that was like pretty good i was like just slow and controlled and that's what you want to do with dips none of that like ego lifting on this shit not worth it safety over everything man safe controlled technique you don't have to be a form nazi but control your sets I'm leaving it at two. <laughs> that'll, that'll do it, man. You don't want to push it past your ability to recover. It's all about training within your ability to recover, you know? Sure, you can spend more time in the gym, you can do more sets, more exercises, but if you're training beyond your ability to recover, it doesn't matter. You're only ever gonna grow to the extent that which your recovery will allow you to. So like, fuck, if you do like 20 sets for a muscle group, but you could only recover from like, you know, four to six, <laughs> Then you, then you did a shitload of junk volume and wasted your time. So that's where a bit of the uh, individualized thing, individualizing uh, you know, your workouts comes into play. Depends on your lifestyle recovery ability, but I kind of cater to more people who don't have like the best recovery, people who have more you know, things going on outside of, their, outside of the gym or other responsibilities and want to focus on other things. That's who I really cater to. But that's something that I've learned. Um, you know, when you're training three times per week, you have more leeway when it comes to programming you have a lot more options of where to stick exercises and shit but then again it's like what are you really recovering from and that's where most people go wrong they're doing a ton of stuff that they can't even really grow from which is kind of funny so you need to be honest with yourself like what am i actually recovering from and so uh a thing that i wanted to illustrate for you guys is um i actually it's actually saturday right so i hit that first workout that you guys saw on the youtube channel i, I hit that on i hit that on tuesday I believe yeah it was Tuesday so usually I'd be doing like Tuesday Friday but yesterday I didn't feel recovered so I pushed it to today and that's something I want I wanted to remember to tell you guys is like you only want to train when you feel fully systemically recovered from your last session or else there's no point you might as well push it a couple days extra and then you'll actually come in and you'll get the you get the personal record you'll get the progress but if you try and push it too soon and this is where like that more is better mentality comes and haunts people. It's like they think like, oh, I better get to the gym because I have to. It's like, well, if you're not going to make progress, if you're not going to be training at your true capacity, well, then why the fuck would you do that? If you just waited an extra one to two days and you'd actually come back with the ability to fuck shit up in the gym. So people don't understand. Um, so I pushed it an extra day and I always do that. Sometimes I don't feel fucking recovered and that's going to happen. If you're actually training hard, then you need recovery quite a bit between workouts, if you're actually gonna make progress, that is, right? So now, I'll probably get into some isolation exercises, probably hit some incline dumbbell curls. So now I'm gonna get into the isolation work of this workout. 
So many people get their fucking panties in a twist when I say that isolation work is really not that important. And the truth is like, I'm not against isolation work. I don't know why people get that idea. It's just that I cater my message to people who I know are doing way too fucking much of it and need to dial that shit back a little bit because a lot of people dig into their recovery ability doing endless isolation work. But the isolation work is the icing on top of the cake. The main driver of growth is always the compound lifts. When you're drug free, when you're a natural lifter, the focus has to be on the big base builders, the big compound lifts, the big basic movements. Basic movements are no longer sexy in this age of fucking TikTok and Instagram, but they're the most time proven exercises that exist. They put more muscle and more physiques than any sort of new exercise that your favorite TikToker fucking came up with, right? So keep things in perspective here. When it comes to drug free lifting, you need to be training the exercises that are gonna be the most bang for your buck. You could spend hours and hours on the cable preacher curl doing fucking endless reps, endless volume, but it's not gonna do very much for you, man. This stuff, the isolation work, is only really effective when it goes along with the big base builders. Doing isolation work is 10 times more effective when you pair it with big exercises because then you have that big growth effect and you can capitalize on that anabolic effect that the big compound lifts create. If you don't do isolation work, you can end up with an imbalanced physique. You can end up with muscle imbalances that can cause injuries and whatnot. So it's obviously very important. My whole point is just like people will do way too much of it to the point where they take away from their ability to put lots of effort intensity and get strong at their big compound lifts, right? So I'm gonna take you guys through some isolation work now. This is just the you know finishing touches of the workout. The big meat, meaty work is done. The mean potatoes is finished. I like to superset my isolation work as long as it works like agonist, antagonist muscle groups. So for example, um, kind of forget what I'm doing after this. I think I'm doing neck curls. So for example, if I'm doing some bicep curls here, I can jump straight into neck curls without losing any performance in the neck curls. So I just superset them, almost treat it like a circuit. So if I'm doing three different isolation exercises, I'll go from one to the next to the next, and then I'll do the second round, next, 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 and this saves a bunch of time. So I put all my effort and focus and time into the big compounds, and then these I kind of just get through pretty quickly. Just to get that blood flow, just get the pump in those, those little muscle groups. So let's hit these incline curls. I fucking love incline curls. Here's another area where people mess up though because they don't get that full stretch down here. And that's where the, that uh, lengthened position is where the real growth stimulus happens on exercises like this. We'll go for a couple sets of eight to 10. Nice 10 reps. I'll jump into some neck curls. Oh, fuck. Okay. I like to stick to like sets of 20 to 30 when it comes to neck curls. I used to do like sets of like 10 to 15. And I felt like I kind of strained my neck going that heavy. So I like to keep it higher reps, just get the blood flow. I find the neck grows so easy when you train it consistently. So I don't want to get like a fucking Vin Diesel neck. But the thick neck looks really good. So yeah, I'll probably do some, maybe some ab wheel rollouts now. So that'll be my last isolation exercise. And then I'll repeat this all one more time. So guys, it would appear the ab wheel rollout is fucking missing. So I'll probably just do some hanging knee raises.
Uh, it's feeling pretty, pretty easy, so I'll probably put a uh, dumbbell between my knees. Oh, shit, fuck me. <laughs> Almost tripped over my own dumbbells. Jesus Christ. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys my, my post-workout meal right here. This is about 900 calories. This is basically just a packet of rice, just one of those microwavable packets of rice. It's like 360 calories. I threw a can of tuna on there, and then some sour cream and some hot sauce, which is a super simple meal you can kind of just throw together. Throw together, throw it together. And then this is some Greek yogurt with, with the banana and 100 grams of strawberries with some honey on top. So this is super simple, I just threw it together in like five minutes, it's like 900 calories, which puts me at like 1100 calories for the day because I just had a banana and an apple before I went to the gym, along with some coffee. So I never like to eat too much before I go to the gym, as I said, I feel like super lethargic and I don't perform as well. So I like to save most of the calories for after I'm done training. If I'm not lifting that day, then I'll just eat normally. Um, but yeah, this is uh, this brings me to 1,100 calories for the day. Uh, on my bulk, I'm usually doing like 32 to 3,300 calories per day. Uh, as you guys know, I don't really track macros very much. I kind of just, I, I track my protein. I make sure I get enough protein, which is like, I don't even really track it to be honest with you because if you're just eating in a calorie surplus and you're eating whole foods, naturally you're gonna be hitting the, all the protein you need. So hitting protein is really, uh, really simple. And I just kind of let my carbs and fats fall where they fall because it's really not very important to track your macros. So I just try to eat a balanced diet, eat lots of whole foods and then let my protein fall fall where it falls and that's basically my my dieting approach but again I make sure I kind of hit that 80 20 approach where you know at least like 80 to 90 percent of my diet comes from whole foods and then like 10 to 20 percent I include like some junk per se right and that's kind of the best balance for most people especially if you're bulking you can afford to have like a few a little bit like like I like to say like that for last 400 to 600 calories for some sort of dessert and um, that's my that's my approach super simple but when you're bulking it's more it's more about hitting that small calorie surplus. I like to do about like 300 to 400 in excess above maintenance per day. And I find that's kind of the sweet, sweet spot when it comes to bulking, when it comes to calories, with the calorie surplus you need to eat in. Anything less than that, and it's really hard to know whether you're actually eating in a calorie surplus or not. And if you're eating at maintenance, as I said, as I was driving back here, it's gonna be really hard for you to pack on serious muscle. So you have to be, you have to put yourself in a sizable calorie, def, a calorie surplus to the point where you know you're actually in a calorie surplus and you're actually giving yourself, you know, sufficient nutrients are giving yourself the building blocks to build new muscle tissue and uh so yeah that's it i'm gonna suck this down so keep keep filming keep show them me sucking this down i was gonna take a bite of this and then take a bite of that but that'd be fucking disgusting so be, really good. be nasty so 
But yeah, it's quick and simple meals. Usually just eat quick and simple meals throughout the day. Just throw some shit together. Maybe it, it's like, these are pretty much my go-tos. And then I do some eggs. I should probably finish chewing. Or I do some eggs with like some toast and then some fruit. And then dinner is usually when I prepare something solid. Like I'll, I'll actually spend the time to cook something solid. But during the day, I couldn't be bothered to cook like whole meals. And I think that's not very practical for most people. So I just kind of throw these kind of nutritious meals together, but they don't take me very much time to prepare. So yeah.